Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you my little poker game, okay? And specifically, what I can do in my poker game is you draw five cards, and then you can click which cards you want to discard. You can see we've swapped these cards out. So, oh, look at that, we got a flush. <laughs> we are very lucky. Um, okay, so what we're going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be showing you how do I do this you know when I click here it goes it changes it to swap and it says swap card over here um, remember I have made other videos um, before that show you know how do we check to see if we got a two pair how do we generate these random cards um, how do we you know do all that other stuff but this video is about how do we swap the cards okay so how it works or the logic that I've taken out is that when it comes to drawing the cards, okay, you would have remembered this from the previous videos um, I did where you draw the first five cards, is I generate a random number for the suit and I'm generating a random number for the card's value. If the second card, I'm going to do this for all five cards, but if the two cards are the same, it regenerates it. But now in order to swap the cards, I'm not just going to draw five cards. I'm going to go and I'm going to draw ten cards. So I'm going to be drawing an extra five cards. And you can see the logic here does get a little bit messy. But basically what I'm just doing is I'm checking that each card is not the same as the other. There's probably a more efficient way of doing that. So if you can figure that out for yourself, that's great. But I just have a little while loop that says, while this card is not equal to any of the other cards, um, you know, generate another random number. Or while it is equal to one of the other cards, generate a random number until it is unique. So now what we have is 10 unique cards, but we're only displaying five of them. In order to get the other cards by clicking swap here, then those other cards pop up. So I'm generating the cards before the game actually starts, but I'm keeping them hidden. And when you swap, then you can get them. So what I need to do, so this is the first thing is drawing the cards. I have made a whole video on how I draw the cards. So if you want to know the logic behind or why the two random variables, go check out that video. Then what I do, I, I try to make a swap card method, but that, that didn't really work too well. Then what I want to do is each of my cards is a button. So if we come here and click accept hand, this is a button. You can see I can click it and it's changing the pictures and it's also changing the state that my game is in. It's going from accepting the hand, which will then take us back to the play method, to the swap card method, which will then activate the different things. So we've got we've got some states that we're playing around with. Um, so yeah, you can see these are my five buttons. They all act very much the same. I probably could have been more efficient with that as well. But anyway, I'm not a master programmer, uh, more into statistics. So this is how I did it. What I do is, don't worry about the toggle, that one there, that's just the general state. What I want to look at here is this piece of code here. So what I'm saying is I create these, they basically are, they toggle. So I created them in the top here. Here we go, select one to select five. They're all set at zero. If you click the button, it makes select equal to one. But if you click the button when it already has been selected, so over here, it's gonna go back to zero and it's gonna set it back to the old card. Then what it do is if I click select here, it then puts this picture as the swap icon. That's what that line of code is doing there. Or if I click it back, it shows me back my old card face. But now it has the select one activated. And this will happen for all the cards. So this will be select one, select two, select three, select four, select five. Now, when I click this, you can see it changes the state. So now my swap card, which is basically my play button, um, when I click that, it's going to display these different cards. And let's go look at that logic now. So what we do is we first say if all the selects are equal, oh, when we click play for the first time, we want to just reset all the selects back to zero. Then what we do is I have this code here. So by clicking select, you force yourself into toggle position one. And what you're going to do here is it says, if select one equals one, that means it was chosen, we're going to replace the first card with the sixth card. 
And remember, I'm generating the numbers and the suit separately, so I need to do both. If card two was selected, we're going to replace card two. If card three was selected, we're going to do that, do that, do that. And then what I do is I change the toggle for the next date and I display the results. Displaying results also recalculates um, whether it is one pair or not. So if we click here, we've got the high card. High card's terrible. Let's see if we get another ace. No, we didn't get another ace. Oh, there. So you can see we've got the two jacks. Or oh, actually, what I should have done is changed it. Anyway, you know, that's the thing about poker. Sometimes you just don't get what you want to get for demonstration purposes. But what we do is we recalculate whether it was a full house or a flush or something like that. We change our button to accept hand and we change a few things and we display our coins and our tokens and our winnings and all that type of stuff. But generally, that's how I did it was in order to be able to swap the cards, I made, I originally draw 10 cards originally. I make each of these a button. By clicking the button, it then tells it that, oh, this button's been clicked. It then swaps the card saying, oh, that button was chosen, replay uh, that. And that way I can simulate the feeling of drawing five cards, discarding however many you want, and getting new cards to try and better your hand. And what's also nice about generating the cards in the beginning is making sure that you don't discard the queen and then you pick up another card and oh my flip, it's the same queen. You know, there could have been that probability if you just generate the cards later. So that was my methodology behind it. Um, this app is available on the App Store, so feel free to go and download it and check it out. Um, I might even put the code, like put it on one of these code stores and then you can download the code and play with it for for yourself, uh, you can play with the whole app, but that generally is how you swap cards in poker in Android Studio. Thanks guys so much for watching, cheers.